Brian Off, who's a data scientist with Bitly. And uh, for the folks who know SiliconANGLE know that we've had a Bitly person on theCUBE at Strata in February, Hillary Mason, uh, great guest, dynamic, a total data geek. Um, she was fantastic. Brian, I'm assuming you're the same. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Good to have you on, man. So Bitly obviously um, is uh, swimming in data. You guys are uh, a company that powers the shortened URLs for anyone who knows what that is. Um, you guys were default on Twitter for many, many uh, months or I think like a couple of years. Now Twitter has their own service recognizing that that's some serious valuable data. So you got booted off Twitter, right? So you're, but you're still out there. You have distribution on uh, other clients, right? Yeah, we're on. We're still on TweetDeck. We're still on Twitter. Uh, Twitter's currently using T.CO to wrap all the links, but Bitly still gets all the information. Uh, we're heavily used on Facebook, a couple other social sites. Yeah, and you guys obviously not only just do the, the short URLs, which is a great way just to kind of create a, kind of a new resolver, if you will, for the for the navigation. Um, you guys also track the analytics, so you know when you shorten a URL and you share something, yeah. you guys are tracking origination and destination, kind of source, destination, yeah. traffic, yeah. knowledge. <laughs> so share with us, what's the data science like at Bitly? Give us a peek inside the, uh, uh, the, the Bitly machine. The data science at Bitly is a, it's an interesting job. We have access to uh, uh, data flowing through all types of networks. So we have data coming from Twitter, from Facebook, direct traffic, email. And through that data, we can get location information, um, country of or like country uh, with the refers, uh, how information is jumping from one network to the other. Uh, all that analytics that I've described is free. You know, if you put the plus at the end of a Bitly URL, you get to see all the free analytics. And we also have enterprise analytics for uh, our enterprise customers who have the custom URL shortener, so they can get a little bit more information about sentiment, reputation monitoring a little bit more geographical information and stuff like that. You know, I remember uh, just, it seemed like a decade ago, but it was only a couple of years ago, the big rage in real-time search. You had Collectica, One Riot, which when Collectica went out of business, One Riot was sold to Walmart.com, and, and with Cosmics, you guys were around, you guys were being incubated, I believe, at the time. Um, People were building these real-time search engines like like Google, like thinking that people are going to really actually sit there and watch a screen and go <laughs> really fast. But it's different, though. I mean, you know, it's not necessarily the same search experience, but it's about discovery, right? So, can you share with us the data science involved around surfacing discovery, whether that's analytics, yeah. connecting people, some of the magic that has to happen in the, behind the scenes? Well, in the in the, you know the old traditional way of like uh, search engines, you basically wrote many crawlers, you put them out on the internet, and you tried to discover new leaks. Uh, with the social media, the real-time web, uh, the content comes to you. It's basically, instead of spiders and crawlers, you're more filtering pipes, and it's a fire hose in how well you can handle it. And that's the nice thing about Bitly, especially uh, as we're starting to do a little bit more research, it's not uh, older content. We have the freshest content because it's the stuff people upload just minutes ago. So uh, the data science component is how do you take interesting things from a torrent and make sense of it, make sense of it in real time, and provide information to people in a timely manner that they can make some decisions based on it. I mean, we're totally geeks on this uh, whole movement of what this all means in terms of the new social web. I mean, SiliconANGLE, you know, our motto is where social science meets uh, it's computer science. So there's a lot of math involved, there's a lot of computer science, there's a lot of kind of sociology in this real-time web. The question I want to ask you is, because uh, a lot of folks are new to this, like real-time, what does it all mean? Talk about this notion you mentioned, content finds you, right? That's kind of almost intelligent content based upon you're now connected to the network. You guys have source destination event when people share stuff on Facebook or share something on Twitter, which is now a norm in, in the internet society. People are sharing with mobile phones, et cetera. You have source destination events. So you guys are tracking these new channels and you know, marketing people and people in general say, oh, there's new channels are out there, social channels. Yeah. I mean, social channels basically means basically distribution of content in social networks or the web, mobile right. phones, social networks. So t explain to activity streams and this new paradigm. What is it? Is it real? How real? And what are some of the factors involved in that? I believe very much it's it's real. It's real, and the fact that just the number of devices people are using to connect to the network is is changing and adapting in ways you know ten years ago were just not everyday occurrences. I mean, just the amount of people who have internet-based mobile phones and how they use it and how they use social networks and how they gather information. I mean, you know, back 
10 years ago, people had the, the palm that could connect to the network, and that was, you know, a boutique item that was, you know, very expensive. Phone.com, remember those days? Exactly, like, yeah. exactly, and now, you know. Crappy browser, you and, know, and now, typing and now, in URLs. And now, like. and now all, it's ubiquitous, <laughs> yeah. nearly. And so that, that changes how people access information and how they produce it, too. So uh, updates are not necessarily coming in, you know, huge, long blog posts. They're coming in quick tweets about, you know, a plane going into the Hudson and that real-time nature of it and how that gr creates a critical mass. I mean, we're seeing examples, obviously, you know, in Egypt, we saw the, you know, the, the government turmoil, it was all social media based, Occupy Wall Street was really generated around, you know, essentially connected people using what's called crowdsourcing techniques. It's basically more that you know, people are just communicating faster, right? Well, it, it's, I, I think it Clay Shirky or William Gibson, I don't know, one of, somebody much smarter than I just said you know technology becomes interesting when it becomes cheap and so all of a sudden as access to these networks became ubiquitous and everybody had it people started using it differently in the same way that when you know uh, desktop publishing became much less expensive it became a much more interesting industry you know people were able to publish their own small magazines and stuff and it's the same with uh, social networks you can find if you have a good voice you can find an audience and you don't need a huge amount of um, infrastructure behind you. Well, technology can becomes really interesting when it's free, too. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And you guys you know, play a role in that. So when you sit down as a, as a team to figure out you know, what data products, if I can even say that, okay. that you want to build, what, what's the objective? Is it you know, utility for the user? Is it, does, it have, does it have to be some kind of monetization pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Talk about that a little uh, bit. Not necessarily. Right now, just as a, as a scientist and a position that I am in the science team, it's, it's a dream come true, it's a joy, because we basically get to take the data that we have and think, what interesting things could we sift from it, what could we build, what could we, uh, what models we could build, what observations we could make, and I, th we, and Hillary's an amazing leader, and she basically, you know, shepherds us and leads us in that way, and as we build stuff and it becomes interesting, the business guys, the infrastructure guys, they see it and they build on top of it and it just works its way up into a product. What, what surprised you um, at Bitly? I mean, I see you, you're getting access to all this great data, yeah. but you're applying techniques and methodologies, you're experimenting, I'm assuming, I'm just speculating, but probably accurate using open source tools, community detection, distribution points, trying to analyze these routes and, and how people share and all this stuff. So it's a, a slew of variables, right? Yeah. And what do you, has anything come out of the woodwork to say, wow, that is cool? It's, uh, Can you share uh, anecdotally anything anec that... Anecdotally. Uh, so when I, was, I first got there, I started to look at just how people use the iPad. Like what time of day do people use different devices? So if you know, it's earlier in the day, are you more likely to use your cell phone or a desktop computer or so forth? And I actually, so I was able to plot all the usage of different devices through Bitly. And I was able to see you know, what time of day is someone more likely to use their Blackberry? And we saw this really interesting uh, traffic pattern where people use their iPad much more in the evenings. And you know they use the computer during the work day at that time, but you could see how people use different devices differently, and I didn't think I would have that much uh, granularity with the data, that I could see how people use devices differently, or what countries the iPad has actually showed up in, and so forth. So that was, that was really surprising that I could get that much information about users' patterns. Talk about uh, some of the things you're working on with uh, at Bitly that are priorities for your business in terms of the data science. And obviously, it's an important area. We heard of you know Jeff Hammerbacher's putting a team together. Everyone's trying to hire this new person that's now has never existed before, really in a computer industry kind of sense. Um, so talk about the kind of projects you're working on, and then some of the the geeky details. You know, Hadoop obviously is a big part of that, yeah. and some of the elements you're using. Uh, right now, I'm, uh, I'm working on a couple of products. Uh, one is just kind of differentiating the quality of the content we're receiving, what refers, give us really good quality content. The other is to try to, uh, we're creating a couple models that we're trying to use to predict how many clicks a tra uh, link is going to get, uh, how fast it will decay, uh, how much uh, traffic is left to go to it based on patterns of usage. Um, and to that degree, I'm also starting to look into uh, different people who have a tendency to uh, access information earlier than other people who are really on the cutting edge. Uh, Mike Jewer, who uh, was my colleague who also put together the presentation with me, he's been working heavily on trending, trending topics. Can Bitly kind of come up with a trend and how can we put our own spin on trending that's different from what other people are doing? Um, so that's what we're doing. We just moved uh, from 
We just moved to VeriSign. We just signed a joint agreement with VeriSign, so we have a data sharing agreement with VeriSign. So we're in the process of trying to go through all that .com data and figure out how it matches up with Bitly and maybe using it for some exciting projects. Great, you can see things early too. I mean, like uh, from a virality standpoint, you can probably see things early. I heard uh, someone chatting about, uh, you know, when Alzir website gets start gets velocity, you can see some things early. Um, so, um, what's his name that uh, was killed? You guys, I think, didn't you guys pick that up early? Was I reading something about that or? Uh, which, are, are you talking about the Bin Laden killing? No, the, um, uh, what's his face, uh, Libya guy. Oh, uh, Gaddafi. Gaddafi. Yeah. Yeah, that, that. Didn't you guys see that early? I think it was, I didn't read, read that somewhere on a blog post. Yeah, we did start, that link got shared pretty that, quickly. That was, early. you know, my, my, sorry to interrupt, my, you know, I've always talking about Charlie Senate. Yeah. Global Post, Global Post basically broke that story, and, nice. and I'm sure that it was a shortened link, and yeah. you know, and they yeah. had the, they actually bought the video from a local guy there. It was amazing. So it's real time yeah. predictive. Well, it's happened, but you can see that early, right? Yeah. And that's the news breaking, that kind of thing. Well, that's the that's the thing is even with with trending, you know, there's words that are going to be heavy. There's ubiquitous terms, you know. Unfortunately, Justin Bieber is always on yeah. the on the social. Lady Gaga. Lady you know, Gaga. Did you say un unfortunately, the the, Car <laughs> uh, the Kardashian. Is what it is. The yeah. Kardashian yeah. clan. Uh -huh. uh, but so uh, the trending is trying to look at when they go outside their norm. Like if you have you know fifty thousand clicks an hour, if you got fifty thousand clicks the next hour, that's not interesting. If you get a thousand clicks an hour and you suddenly get fifty thousand clicks, that's interesting. Something's happened there. Something changed. So it's trying to find, trying to strike the balance of telling people what's the latest news but then also adjusting that to what the norm is. Look at the changes to the margin. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff Hammerbacher yesterday said that he looked at the skill sets of his, of his team and he pointed to, he said, I had data analysts and research scientists and it sort of put them together. Yeah. That's how I came up with data scientists. Is, I'm, uh, does I'm, that apply in your world? I mean, that's, that's our team. We have, uh, you know, Hillary and myself have CS backgrounds. Mike uh, comes from a heavy mathematics background. Uh, Dennis is just an amazing programmer, and uh, we recently got a, uh, a new person, Anna, who is a physicist. So it's it's bringing a lot of people. You need the philosophy major, and you got to get the liberal arts in there. I mean, come on, guys, you uh, get two yeah. the, the diversity. You got to get the diversity in there. We're, but we're, you, you know. know. We, 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 we take we take all who can hack well we're so. really we're really big fans of you guys we've been following you guys for years I, I personally have been following you guys since you got your funding and it's just been great to see you guys emerge uh, bitly as a company we know you got a ton of great data um, we'd love to collaborate with you on stuff if you ever want to work with silicon angle um, and, and publish trend data we'd love to do that with you um, we have some things that we've been doing on our own um, as well as instrumentation around audience is something that's important to us. So again, we think you, what you're doing is really important work and congratulations uh, for uh, just an amazing run and continue the growth. I appreciate it, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for coming on theCUBE, Brian. Thanks for having appreciate me. Brian off at Bitly. Great to meet you. Watch these guys, that real value add. I think that's going to be a real future around analytics. This real-time piece is critical. The speed of business is accelerated and then uh, you guys are a part of it. Thank